My most important scar for me is my C-section scar. You know, it reminds me of everything that uh, we all went through to get her here. And she's here and she's healthy, healthy and she's happy and it is what it is. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kyla Pratt and you're watching my Women's Health Body Scan. What I love most about my body is all the things that it's able to do. We all grow up and we're like programmed to have these issues with whatever our body is or whatever it looks like. And once you sit back and realize that you're able to do all these amazing things, it's like we've been taught to focus on the wrong things. Like my body has, has given birth, my body has brought life you know, and just being able to get up and run and, and you have to, you know, you have to be appreciative of the things that you're able to do. I started this thing where I like, I now lotion in the mirror and I thank my body for everything that it's done for me. You know, I believe in energy. I believe in what you speak and what you put out there is gonna come back. And I need my body to hear these things and, and know that I appreciate it, you know? Well, I do have tattoos. I have a few. Um, most of them are really tiny. I actually have all of the ideas of the ones that I want now in my head, but I'm saving that for like special occasions of when I want to do it. Cause I'm one of those nitpicky people. Like I know what I want, but where do I want it? And with my dude being a tattoo artist, it's like, I don't want to be that annoying client that I want to know exactly what I want, where I want it. All of my tattoos mean something very special to me, but I have one on my ankle and it says, live with no excuses, love with no regrets. I got that, I wanna say, maybe 15 years ago. Really because I just wanted to constantly remind myself, like, people have excuses for days. We're all going through something. We all have stuff going on. It's like, are you going to just let those excuses just live there and you get nothing accomplished? Or are you gonna say, everybody has stuff going on. Just do what you need to do and process the way you need to process, but let's keep it moving. But also love with no regrets because I feel like a lot of times people get into relationships or um, friendships or just uh, anything where they are hurt and they don't allow themselves to live uh, because of one or two situations. And there's seven billion people you know, in the world. So it's like, if something doesn't work out with a friend or it doesn't work out with a spouse or it doesn't work out with someone that you're related to, it's like, just, it's, it's okay. Just take deep breaths and brush it off. And I just always loved live with no excuses, love with no regrets. I mean, I was a tomboy, so I was getting bumped and bruised throughout my entire childhood. But my most important scar for me is my C-section scar from my youngest baby. She was premature, and so it's not like super huge, but it, you know, it reminds me of everything that uh, we all went through to get her here. And she's here and she's healthy, healthy and she's happy and it is what it is. <laughs> These questions about beauty are always hard because I'm like ridiculously low maintenance. <laughs> but I'm always interested in all those things, but I'm always like, okay, if I switch up from using the regular things that I use, is it gonna make me break out? Like what's gonna happen? But I definitely do not sleep with makeup on. I wear makeup for work. I've worn makeup my entire life. It's not one of my favorite things uh, to have on, but then when you put it on and you look like, you'd be like, okay, hold on, wait, I do need a little extra, you know. But um, I'm pretty much a wash my face and moisturize kind of girl. And the only product that I can really think of is shea butter, like straight like African shea butter from the beauty supply. <laughs> a lot of people, it's, it's very, um, thick on them so a lot of people don't like it but I'm one of those people like I shower and I'm like oh I'm gonna walk around with this thick stuff on my body for a good five minutes so it can just simmer in get melted into my skin I'm just a super moisturizer I have to be moisturized otherwise I feel dry all day like I feel I have this like I can imagine my skin like looking like sandpaper so I, I keep like lotion, I keep shea butter. That's like my only thing that I like have to have. <laughs> if I travel and I don't have, I'm, I'm like panicked. Everything else I'll figure out. 
What's crazy is I used to bite my nails when I was younger and uh, people started telling me like it was an anxiety thing. So they were like, try to find different things, it's like a straw to chew on and then that just became nasty. You just got a straw and you see, so then you're like, I'm disgusting. And then now you're trying to figure out other things. But I actually started getting nails when I was younger because I knew how cheap I was and I knew that I was not gonna get my nails, I wasn't gonna add any nails and then bite them off. So I was like, you're not gonna waste money, so do that. But now I feel like, I was just telling my man the other day, like having my nails done is like my thing now. Cause I'm low maintenance, like literally baseball cap, workout clothes, like I'm moving, I got stuff to do. Like I'm on a mission, I'm making things happen. I don't always have time to be done up, you know? But if my nails are done, I feel dressed. <laughs> it's weird for me because hair has always been like a touchy, subject. I've seen interviews of other black actresses talking about being on sets that, you know, don't know how to do their hair. And I'm like, I've lived through that. I literally, my entire childhood, my mom would redo my hair in the trailer. And then becoming an adult, I would bring my own flat iron, my own curling iron. And about, I wanna say five years ago is when I finally was like, you know what, I need a change. And so I cut my hair into like a bob. But then I was working out all the time. And so my hair was getting puffy and I'm like, I can't have my hair as an excuse for me not being able to work out. And so I shaved the sides and the back. And I'm like addicted to it because it's so low maintenance. Like it's literally, put the hat on, little ponytail hanging out the back. I ain't gotta even brush anything. But now, um, because I've been wearing it on the show that I've been doing for so long, it's become too much maintenance for me. And so now I'm growing it back, but I think I'm gonna regret growing it back as soon as it, but it's cool. I, sh I still have the back shaved a little bit, so I think I gave myself a little, a little something to live with. But growing up, I feel like the only thing that I would really, I would find, um, I don't even know the name of this hair mayonnaise, but it's like a hair mayonnaise and it's like a green and orange bottle. And I would literally sleep with it on my hair because being on set, you have so many people touching and curling and so much heat and so much damage and having so many different experiences with different hairstylists. It's nothing really against them, but they don't really have to deal with any type of what's gonna happen the next week. Those, those were the only people who I would be like getting into it with. Cause I'm like, look, I'm just trying not to be bald when you're not here. Like let's, you know, have conversations, but you know, they're in a weird position as well because they need to make it look the best it possibly can be. So I remember dyeing my hair for a project and it didn't really get damaged because I slept with that hair mayonnaise on. Mental health is extremely extremely important to me. I feel like that's why we experience so many crazy things in this world because people are not willing to acknowledge how important it is to be healthy here. The focus is always other places. And me personally, I've struggled in the past before, especially becoming a mom and realizing that I'm in charge of these human beings' existence. And what if I make the wrong decisions? And am I losing myself in any of these new things that are happening for me and I kind of had to sit back and take deep breaths and understand like as a woman as a mother as a human being I need things for myself and one of the things that became most important to me was actually fitting in working out I feel like a lot of people look at working out as like a punishment for what you've eaten and I remember <laughs> My man telling me it's not a punishment for what you've eaten, it's a celebration of what your body can do. People don't understand getting your endorphins going and, and getting that release and feeling good about yourself. Like literally it's an hour out of my day. I have to make sure that I am mentally strong and able in order to help raise children that don't have to heal as much as previous generations have. And so it's really sitting back and figuring out what do you want for you? What makes you feel great? And I find that, you know, me doing some type of physical activity, but then also allowing myself to have moments where it's like, I wanna go have lunch with my friend and we wanna catch up about life and it, that's okay. Nothing else matters is if up here isn't together. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Women's Health. And don't forget to catch up on Call Me Cat on Fox and the Proud Family Louder and Prouder on Disney+. Plus.